president spent Sunday working on the address, but he's already toured the country, previewing much of what he plans to lay out on Tuesday. Hello, everybody. Hey. Including two free years of community college, increased access to high-speed internet, and new online privacy protections. To pay for some of this, as well as for nearly $200 billion in new middle-class tax cuts, the president will propose raising capital gains taxes for top earners. The president is now mere hours away from saving the American middle class and ensuring his legacy remains not only intact, but the next two years will cement his place as one of the leading presidents of our time. That is, of course, what the president and his side will believe and will promote. And the American public wants to hear substantive answers from the GOP. Or else... Welcome to Midpoint, representing Pennsylvania's 11th Congressional District since 2011 and a member of the Committee on Homeland Security. Lou Barletta joins us today. Congressman, thank you so much for being here. Uh, nice to talk to you. Well, let's get to it, because the president here seems ready to go ahead and basically throw out the gauntlet. Is it not fair to say that, in some ways, he's played his cards very well because he is going to back the Republicans into a corner and say, I dare you. Now the Republicans have to come out fighting and they've got to make sure that they don't get caught being called bigots or being called against the middle class. Well, you know, it may play well politically, uh, but it's simply bad policy. Uh, the president uh, likes to focus more on the politics and rather than good policy that'll, that'll get people back to work and get America back to work again. Raising taxes on a segment of the population that we're counting on uh, to create jobs is, is simply a bad idea. Anyone who has been in business uh, w would understand that, that the best way to grow the economy is through the private sector. Uh, to allow them to make investments uh, when they buy more equipment, when they expand their company, they hire more people, and we all know how that works. Uh, asking the federal government or believing that the federal government could act as a middleman to somehow get more money to the middle class, uh, it, it's just not uh, good politics. It's not good policy. But fair to say, maybe... Maybe good politics, because is he not speaking? What you're speaking about is exactly right. You're talking about the businessmen, the people who pay the bills, the people who make the money, the people who generate the jobs. But it would seem the president is speaking right to everybody else, those people who have to work for those folks, and saying they're still the problem, you're not getting your fair share, and these are the people that he is basically pushing and counting on to come out and vote Democratic. So in that sense, is he perhaps playing it properly? Well, he is. I mean, it sounds good. You know, obviously anyone who's listening to this who, who would love to, you know, somehow have the government get more money to them, uh, it, it, may, it may sound good. But, you know, just let's roll back to November when the president said that his policies uh, are on the ballot. It's not his name, but his policies are. And the American people told him what they thought about his policies. And this is more class warfare. This is more rich against poor. This is uh, this is continuing those same policies, and the economy has been so slow uh, to, to, to come back that I don't believe the American people really have confidence that this president uh, knows what he's doing when it, when it comes to uh, uh, getting this country back to work again. So it may sound good. But at the end of the day, I, I, I doubt if many Americans really believe that this is the answer. So let's do this about a minute or so before we have left, then we'll take a break, come back and talk more. But the minute we have left here, what then, in your opinion, do the Republicans need to do, not only in their response tonight after the State of the Union, but in the days and weeks and months following that will convince the American public they have a real plan, they're not bigoted against certain people, they don't hate the middle class, and not get pushed into a corner like the president is trying to do? We need to stay steady. Uh, here in the House, we've passed many of bills that Harry Reid would not bring up for a vote. But stay steady in, 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 in explaining to the American people that the best way to get this country back to work again is not to regulate businesses more. It's not to uh, keep our foot on the throat of, of American business, but allow them to grow. Just like we did with energy. We, we have been preaching that we need more domestic energy, uh, and, and, and that has... Uh, re relayed into lower gas prices. Uh, our policies will work. We can't back off now. I believe the American people, by their vote in November, realize uh, that the Republican Party has a better idea of how to get this country back to work again. Not more taxes, more regulations, bigger government. 
that's not the answer. It will be interesting to see. All right, please, Congressman, stand by for a couple of minutes now, because we're going to turn to the issue of immigration after the break, where push will come to shove sooner instead of later inside the Beltway. And again, it's almost the same thing. Republicans must find a way to keep from being shoved into the corner of racism by the Democrats, who always will claim that if you're against immigration, then you must be a bigot. That and so much more when we continue. This is Midpoint, where every day we question everything. Let's welcome back to Midpoint, Pennsylvania Republican Congressman and a longtime vocal opponent of illegal immigration, Lou Barletta. Congressman, what do you expect the president to say this evening with regard to immigration in the State of the Union? Well, I think he's going to say the same thing. Uh, you know, he, he somehow uh, mixes uh, illegal immigration with with legal immigration and, and wants to paint a picture that uh, if we don't give amnesty to uh, to the people that are here illegally, uh, that somehow you're against immigrants. And and uh, <laughs> there's nothing more harmful to the to the legal the legal immigrants, the people who have come here for a better opportunity, than to allow five million more people to come here and compete for their jobs, or depress the wages of the American worker. I would like to hear the president say that he's going to stand up for the American worker and, and not for the illegal immigrant. Uh, you know, the American worker worries about his job, his or her job. They worry about uh, how much money they're going to earn so that they can send their children to school. Uh, you know, adding five million more competitors who are willing to work for less money isn't the way to help the American worker or the legal immigrants that are here. How does the GOP then gather themselves together and use the media, if they will use whatever is at their advantage, to fire back at what the president has already said, what is already on the table, and prove to the people out there that they're not a bunch of bigots? Well, you know, I, I believe, you know, most people that are here understand that uh, if you're against illegal immigration, that doesn't mean that you, you don't support the legal immigrants that are here. In fact, I believe it's more anti-immigrant to support illegal immigration because we're not helping the people that are here, the people that came for, for a better life and a better job. And we have to get that message to, to the legal immigrants who, who have come to America for that opportunity that we're fighting for them, that we're fighting for the American worker, and that if you want the opportunity that America has to offer, you need to come here through the legal process for good reason. There are people around the world that want to harm us. We need to protect the, our, our American workers, and we need to protect our national security. And allowing people to come here illegally is not the way to do it. And we just need to get that message to the people here, and I believe most of them will understand. I was a mayor of a city that is 49% Latino, and nobody took a harder stance against illegal immigration than I did while I was mayor, and I won with 90% of the vote. So it, it's very clear that, that we can get the message, we can help the immigrants that are here and still stand up for the American worker in our national security. Well, now, tomorrow, and correct me if I'm wrong, please, the House Homeland Security Committee takes up H.R. 399, that is the Secure Our Border First Act of 2015. There are many people who say that this still has a tremendous amount of holes and really doesn't do enough to solve the illegal immigration crisis. Do you agree or disagree with that statement? Well, it's a lot. It's much better than than the last border bill uh, that they were proposing. It puts a lot more resources on the border. It holds them accountable for for operational control and making sure that we secure the border. There's an independent commission uh, that will make that determination on whether our border is secure or not. I have been pushing for for uh, uh, some language in there that will be in there uh, using biometric entry and exit. As you know, over 40% of the people that are here illegally in America didn't cross the border illegally. They come on a visa, the visa expires, and they never go home. We had no way of tracking them. So I have been pressing for, uh, for a biometric entry exit so that we know that when you are uh, scheduled to leave the country, we know whether or not you have we need to focus on our northern border, our airports, seaports. A lot of that language is in there. Is this a perfect bill? No, not at all. It's not perfect at all. But I am satisfied that it is a lot better than it was, and we're going to hold them accountable uh, before the Secretary of Homeland Security can declare that our border is secure. He or she will not be making that determination 
that was a big sticking point for me. I've only got about a minute left. Is it fair to say the one thing in the bill that really people are asking about is the bill says apprehended illegals must face consequences, but doesn't really talk about what those consequences are. Shouldn't that all be better spelled out? Well, I, I believe it will be through the judiciary. The, you know, this is not the exact uh, the, the committee to to handle some of the, the language that I'm going to be pushing for. I'm going to be looking for, uh, you know, what we did through the executive uh, defunding the president's executive amnesty was again uh, get rid of the Morton memos. Mm -hmm. That that's they were directives to tell ICE agents not to enforce the immigration laws. So a lot of what we want to do on enforcement really is going to come through the Judiciary Committee and not all in the Homeland Security uh, uh, bill that we're going to be passing tomorrow. So we have a lot more work to, to be done. This is not the answer tomorrow, trust me. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do to make sure that we're stopping illegal immigration, we're making sure America is safe and secure, and we're enforcing our laws. We could pass all the laws we want, but if we have an administration that won't enforce them, it really doesn't do any good. That probably is the best way to put it in a good final word. Congressman Lou Barletta, we thank you so much for your time. I'll look forward to the next time we speak. Thank you. Thank you. The recent breakthrough at Duke University involving actual human muscle tissue being grown in the lab will change the way diseases are researched and treated. That comes up later right here on the program that questions everything. This is Midpoint.